Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian, Christy here. Summer Reading Program 2021 has just launched and it's going to run all the way through Saturday, July 31st. In addition, we just launched our new service Beanstack, which is essentially a reading log. Um, if you have any questions about either of these things, please, please, please contact the library. You can also visit our website. Our website has some great information about how to get set up on Beanstack. Beanstack is very simple to uh, maneuver, to navigate, and I think people are really, really going to like it. Uh, in addition, this year's summer reading program theme is Tales and Tales. Now, if you couldn't tell, Tales and Tales is all about animals, and as most of us at the library are massive, massive animal lovers, we are so excited. We've got some amazing programs scheduled and we think that you're really going to like them. Uh, Miss Stacy and Miss Autumn have already put up a story walk all the way along Milan's Town Square. Um, there are weekly craft sessions for kids. Um, there are fun activities from trivia all the way to watercoloring for teens. Now, we've even got an ice cream social planned for July where people can take scoops of ice cream and create little kitties and uh, bears and other animal themed looks to them. Uh, so yeah, we're just very, very excited about all of these things. You can find more information about what we've got in store either by following us on Facebook. I always talk about things that are going on over there as well as on our website and our website's calendar. So, as I'm sure you all know, there are a ridiculous number of phenomenal books and movies available that are all about animals. I mean, just countless titles. And to sort of sift our way through and maybe offer up just a few recommendations of some of our favorites, I've put together a few weeks worth of recommendations of both books and movies. Now, this is going to be a little bit different from our usual Film Rec Friday. These titles are going to be primarily uh, based on physical media, so DVDs, books, as opposed to just digital media. But if there is a uh, digital version available, I 100% will mention that in the uh, description below the video. Now, every, uh, every installment of these recs is going to have a different theme. I've got some planned for... Um, different kinds of genres. There's one that's definitely geared more towards adults about like animal attacking movies, say like Jaws and things like that. Um, then we've got some that are just pure comedies, titles like that. But this week, since we are just starting out, I thought it might be nice to just recommend some really heartwarming, favorite, family-friendly titles. And I've put together about six uh, books and movies that I think will really speak to you and that would be appropriate for kids, teens, adults, everybody. And I've tried to pick titles that, you know, will be fun to watch, even if you're an adult watching essentially a kid's film. So um, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and dive in. I hope that you find titles that you like within these. If you don't, make sure you check out our streaming video services. Those video services are um, Clevenets Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. There's tons and tons of stuff on there, and you will definitely find titles that you'll be uh, find enjoyable on there if none of these recommendations particularly speak to you. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the recommendations. Okay, my first recommendation is for a fantastic adventure movie called Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. Now, Homeward Bound focuses on this trio of domestic house pets. Um, there's an American bulldog named Chance that's voiced by Michael J. Fox, a golden retriever named Shadow voiced by Don Amici, and this fantastically prissy Himalayan cat voiced by Sa Sally Field. Now, they belong to the Seaver family. When the Seaver family goes on family vacation, they end up leaving the three pets at a friend's ranch. But the pets don't really realize that it's just a temporary situation. They think they've been left behind. This leads them to decide to run away from the ranch and head back to their home all by themselves across this vast wilderness. And they have to manage to survive, you know, wild animals. They have to survive really rough terrain and some crazy, crazy situations. It's 
definitely quite thrilling, especially for a kid's film. Um, what I really, really like about this one is I do remember watching as a, a kid and just really enjoying it in general. I mean, they're talking animals, you know, who doesn't love that sort of thing? And they're going through this crazy adventure, trekking back home. But as an adult, there are parts where I was really kind of like strangely moved. You know, I think as an adult watching this, you will definitely find yourself feeling sentimental, nostalgic, and and maybe even tearing up a little bit in certain parts that I definitely never had any extra feelings about as a kid. So this one was a really fun one to rediscover. It is actually loosely based on a book called The Incredible Journey by Sheila Burnford, and it is one of the few adaptations that I think changes quite a lot for the better. Um, it does modernize it, but it also adds some serious heart that I know I didn't feel when I read the book originally. And I think that some of the changes are really necessary for a more modern era. The book was originally written in 1960, so some things have definitely changed. I mean, this movie was from the 1990s, so things have clearly changed since then as well. But I think it definitely feels much more contemporary with those little um, small adjustments. Anyway, there's tons of excitement and definitely some danger going on for the animals, but I do think it's suitable for kids pretty much of all ages. Like I said, very heartwarming film, definitely targeted towards full families. I think if you're looking for something that will entertain you and very young ones, this is definitely a really good option. Again, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. You should probably check it out. Okay, my next recommendation is for the film Babe, which is all about this adorable little piglet named Babe, who ends up on this quiet little farm and it just sort of follows his misadventures while he lives out his existence there. Um, he meets tons of other farmyard animals. He eventually develops almost a mother-son relationship with a sheepdog and much to everyone's shock, discovers that he himself is quite a good herder of sheep. He becomes a sheep pig. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it is, it is laugh out loud funny in so many moments, but it's also just really, really sweet. It's about this pig who won't let anyone dampen his spirits. And there's something so sweet and so wonderfully charming about this film. I loved it as a kid. I loved it as a teenager. I watched it in college a number of times. Over the years, I have watched this movie probably 20 times. And even when I watched it in prep for this, I still continued to enjoy it. Um, James Cromwell plays the farmer who's this very sweet, mild-mannered man named Arthur Hoggett. Um, Hoggett. Ba -dum -bum uh, he's definitely very much enamored with Babe. He thinks he's like adorable and sweet and you can tell even though he never says anything. Um, he, he's, he is all of us, I feel, <laughs> as we watch this movie. Um, you definitely have some precarious moments with some uh, farmyard animals that do not enjoy Babe. Uh, and those moments really do satisfyingly ramp, ramp up the tension in the movie, uh, but that without ever making it scary or too much for uh, a younger viewer. Now, at the end of the day, this movie is definitely about the beauty of, say, a found family. Uh, it's about determination, um, the strength that comes with being kind to others. Uh, and it's going to touch people of every age. Little kids are going to love it. Adults are going to love it too. Uh, it's sweet. It's heartwarming. And it's also definitely a little bit odd. Like there's some real weird moments in this film, but they're enjoyably odd. Um, I, even before I rewatched, I distinctly remembered this very weird, Shakespearean style Greek chorus of three blind mice that periodically would sing um, these a cappella arrangements of classic standards. Like, I 100% recalled their voices singing Blue Moon. Very, very odd, but thoroughly.
thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, just little moments like that. Whoever put those moments in definitely really liked doing it. Um, so you have these moments of real sweetness tied in with sort of quirky, strange little scenes, and it just makes this really wonderfully sweet movie. And I think that people of any age will definitely enjoy it, and I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend you give it a try. If you've never watched it before, you are absolutely in for a treat. And that is, again, Babe. If you are on the hunt for a animated feature that includes a crazy good cast, a truly rockin' soundtrack, and just a really fun storyline in general, I strongly recommend Over the Hedge. Over the Hedge is a ridiculous amount of fun. It follows this rather shady raccoon named RJ, voiced by Bruce Willis, uh, as he convinces this preformed family of woodland creatures to cross over into human civilization in order to scavenge for food. They need this food in order to pacify this, you know, angry, grumpy bear that they have managed to displease. In, in addition to the fact that they just need food in general for themselves. So, you know, it's definitely one of those stories that there's some urgency to, but there's so many pockets of like fun and ridiculousness with it, um, in part because the cast is so strong and so wonderful. As I mentioned, the main character of RJ the Raccoon is played by Bruce Willis. You've got, of all people, Gary Shandling playing the leader of the little family. He's this incredibly cautious box turtle. Um, strangely very fitting for Gary Shandling, I, f I feel. Um, in addition, you've also got uh, Steve Carell playing this crazy hyperactive squirrel named Hammy. Wanda Sykes is this sassy skunk named Stella. You've got uh, Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara, whom I love, uh, playing a pair of porcupine parents with a rambunctious brood. You've got, again, what? William Shatner and Avril Lavigne, also a strange pair, playing father and daughter opossums. I mean, Nick Nolte plays the giant angry bear. It's, it's a very strong, very ridiculous cast. And that's, again, what makes so much of this story really, really fun. Um, you definitely have that sort of questing element where the goal is to please a dangerous entity going on. So it's a little reminiscent of, say, like A Bug's Life, things like that, uh, but not so similar that it feels like it's copying. It's definitely just a trope, a literary trope. Um, and this one also, I feel, has a lot more of an edge to it. Uh, some of the humor is definitely geared to go over kids' heads and reach out to adults and parents watching, and I think that totally works. M very much in tone with, say, like a Toy Story or a Toy Story 2. Uh, so if you are, in fact, looking for something that will work on a lot of different levels with humor that runs the gamut, great animation, oh, and a soundtrack with Ben Folds from Ben Folds 5. It's such a good soundtrack. Um, I strongly recommend Over the Hedge. It's a ton of fun, and I think you will really, really enjoy it. Okay, for all you book lovers out there who are looking for an excellent children's story to read, strongly recommend the book Perfect the Pig by Susan Jeshka, I think is how you say her last name. Anyway, if you grew up watching Reading Rainbow like I did, you might recall this one. It actually was the main story uh, that was recommended. And in Perfect the Pig, there's this tiny little piglet who's actually the runt of his litter. And he lives his life ignored by everyone. Nobody notices him. No one cares about him. Not his mother, not his siblings, nobody. And at, uh, at one point, he is suddenly given this sort of magic wish to make. And for whatever reason, he wishes for wings. Um... He wishes for wings because he just wants people to notice him. And unfortunately, sometimes you get what you wish for. Um, he got his wings and the other farmyard animals definitely started to notice him, but they sort of start to ostracize him. And they are so fervent in their actions that when some of the other pigs 
tell him he should just fly away, he decides to just fly away. And that's when the real crux of the story starts. Um, he goes from being this ostracized animal to suddenly meeting this young, talented artist named Olive, who really starts to form a bond with this little piglet, and she ends up naming him Perfect. And she uses Perfect as her muse. She paints pictures of him. She, you know, travels with him. She she does love him as you love a beloved pet. And, you know, they are this perfect pair. But unfortunately, one night when he goes on this like little jaunt just to stretch his wings, he gets separated from her and ends up being essentially um, kidnapped, I guess you would call it, uh, by a rather unscrupulous man who starts to use Perfect's wings for his own purposes. Um, this story does have a happy ending. I know it sounds kind of dark so far, uh, but it really, really is quite a lovely, lovely children's story. Um, I remember loving it when I first read it, and I still think it's quite lovely today. Um, again, I did notice like it's way darker than I thought, but I think still quite appropriate. Um, what's great about this is that it can spawn a lot of really cool conversations, uh, conversations and questions about discrimination, about acceptance, about what it means to be a good friend, um, and even potentially business ethics. Um, you know, I think complex children's books are important to have and I think they're important to read and I think when you have a story that's not purely happy or purely sunshine and light is when you get those layers and you get the questions from your kids. So as I said, I think Perfect Pig is a really, really wonderful storybook and I would strongly recommend it. I think um, it's one of those that I would and will continue to enjoy as the years go by. So again, Perfect the Pig by Susan Jeschke. Um, I think I think this is one that you'll really, really like. My final recommendation for this week is for what is possibly the sweetest, cutest graphic novel I have ever read, and that is called Cheese Sweet Home. Now, Chi is this adorable little newborn kitten who, on taking a leisurely little stroll with her family one day, ends up getting separated from them and finds herself just lost and alone in a park. And just about when she's going to have a meltdown, she is discovered and rescued by this adorable little boy named Yohei and ends up becoming part of Yohei's family. Now, one of the big conflicts of this storyline comes when we discover that Yohei's family lives in an apartment that does not allow pets, but they're so enamored with this ridiculously cute, ridiculously sweet kitten that they decide that they're going to do whatever they can to keep this cat. And so there are tons of little moments and little panels where they have to hide Chi and where Chi is almost discovered. And, and it's just really, really cute. And that's one of those things that works... On, on multiple levels. As an adult, you know how the ramifications of being caught essentially breaking a lease policy might be. Whereas a, a small child would just be like, oh, I hope they don't catch the kitten. Um, I absolutely think this works on every age level from very young kids all the way up through adults. Uh, this didn't even come out until 2000 and six, four or six, I want to say, at which point I was in my 20s and I 100% read this and adored it the first time I read it. So, you know, it, it definitely works for all audiences. Um, there are tons of adorable little moments in here. It's a very slice of life. Um, Chi meets other animals that are being hidden within the apartments. Um, she meets some animals that live outside the apartments, but primarily it's her experiences bonding with Yohei and his parents that make it really, really a heart-centric um, graphic novel. And it's just 
one of those feel good comics. It's uh, spread over four omnibuses. So you get a lot of story and it never gets boring. It's definitely for, it's definitely going to speak more to cat lovers than anything else. But if you do love cats, this is the graphic novel for you. Even if you don't like graphic novels, if you like cats, this is it. Um, there's also, uh, an anime available, which you can also get through the library um, if you order it in. Uh, and those consist of like 15 minute episodes, I want to say. So they're really easy to watch. And it's very, very cute animation. Uh, totally matches with the art style and the graphic novel. But yeah, I, I can't recommend this one enough. I actually own the entire graphic novel series. That's how much I like it. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for something sweet, something fun, and something that will work for all age ranges, check out Cheese Sweet Home, whether it be in the graphic novel form or the anime form, it's definitely highly recommended. Uh, so that is my last recommendation for this inaugural week of uh, Rex. If you have a title uh, specifically towards this theme that you think you that others would really, really enjoy, please, please, please comment down below. Let us know. We always love hearing other people's recommendations. It's so much fun for us and we definitely check them out. Um, as I've mentioned, we have planned a ton of other themes for future weeks, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for those. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this episode. Thank you so, so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye!